All right. Hi, everybody. Hello. Really coming on here. Um, just going to do a little talk show about last night's game. See, you know, get some thoughts, some insights from the wonderful Quig here. Uh, uh, Kate, if you want to kind of just introduce and describe Quig, you can go ahead and do that. Um, oh, jeez. Okay. Um, I should have come to this more prepared. It's okay. Sorry, it's I, have her, I have her portrait pulled up. So. All right. We're flying by the seat of our pants. Um, yep. Quig is kind of near and dear to me. I um, actually made her because I wanted to make my ideal character, and uh, I love war clerics. Um, and I liked the idea of a high elf pirate <laughs> because it doesn't yeah. seem like it works, especially because high elves are supposed to be very prim and proper and all that. So I kind of wanted her to go rogue that way. And originally I did actually build her as a rogue until I uh, saw a TikTok actually about how clerics don't actually have to be like devoted to a god, just to an ideal. Yeah. And so a war cleric could be devoted to the idea of freedom and the sea and yeah, mm -hmm. kind of wrote down a bunch of different things on a piece of paper and let the dice decide what she looked like, how she would act, all that, which if nobody's ever, if you haven't done that, I highly recommend it. It's so much fun to just like randomly make a character and let kind of, you know, Not the to fates mention, decide. Like, the, it, it turned out beautiful. I mean, like I said, I have the uh, I had the uh, portrait pulled up, and mm -hmm. it, it just turned out amazing. I loved it. Uh, all yeah, have... most of the artwork that's done for unexpected field work, the Thursday night game, has come from her. It's just I, I, so I she's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, yeah, I don't know. I've been my having baby. a great time. <laughs> Uh, I've been having a great time uh, messing with her, uh, mm. um, and uh, you know, there's some other stuff in the background going on that you don't know about. And... I'm well aware. I gave you a very extensive backstory. <laughs> yeah, which which is is very wonderful for uh, in the perspective of a DM because. Mm -hmm. I have so much that I get to use to build off of, to make a story from, and that just feels great in of itself, honestly. Uh, um, I, I feel like when I um when I first joined your campaign, like when I first began playing with Cinetear, um, I didn't really have as much time to really get attached to her. Because it's kind of just fly by the seat of my pants kind of thing. So it's been fun to throw you a character that I'm actually devoted to playing. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, what uh, Deadpool likes to say, you know, fuck it, we'll do it live. That's kind of becoming a thing. Uh, he, he says that yeah. so much. Fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> fuck it, we'll so, do it live. My best friend says that all the time. <laughs> uh, I... It have been I've been stuck in it. Um, it's a great saying, and it's worked out so far. Another saying yeah, that I like to I'd use, say. like, uh, you know, it may not be professional, but if they wanted a professional, they should have hired a professional. So, yeah. Touche. Um, <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> I did. I did want to ask. Um, so, so you kind of touched on it, mm -hmm. the the inspiration of Quig. Um, you you wanted a, a war cleric because you love war clerics. Uh, um, so that, much. <laughs> that kind of was roguish. Mm -hmm. uh, what what gave you the want to do that, or did you just? Um. Yeah. Honestly, it came from. A different game that I was playing in, a couple of them, and people were playing rogues. And they were kind of more... I don't know, like, just rogues can be anything. And I wanted something that wasn't so organized, like a druid or anything like that. Um, and so that's why I kind of decided to go with the rogue idea, and then I was like, well, if she's a rogue, like, what kind of rogue is she going to be? I didn't want to do assassin, because that's over 
I feel like that's overplayed in the rogue thing. Like, if you're a rogue, you're an assassin. And so I wanted her to be a little bit different. I wanted her to have a criminal background because a criminal high elf, they not, they're not supposed to exist. Uh, and then also, like, there were pretty much just three big ones. Is I wanted her to be roguish. I wanted her to not be an assassin. I wanted her to have a criminal background but be different. And then also I wanted to play on the disappointed parents and not the dead parents. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The the <laughs> so, dead parents is something that's used often. Yeah. Um, and so, not. I wouldn't even say it's overused though. It's just used mm -hmm. often. Yeah, it's used often. It's the go-to, and I wanted to kind of try to do something different. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy with her. Uh, She's me too. I. When when people give me backgrounds that are as detailed as yours, Ed, it really helped, especially in this case, because I knew mm. like the main focus of it and and the BBEG shit like that. Um, mm -hmm. And but I didn't know what the adventure was gonna be like to get there. And then you came in and you were like, "Fucking pirate!" And I'm like, I want to be a pirate. <laughs> You're just pirate. Like, all right. <laughs> all let's right. Let's do this. Uh, and I already run a pirate campaign on Mondays and have been for, for a hot minute now. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that I've done on there that they've really enjoyed. Uh, so I knew you guys would enjoy them too. Um, little fun fact. A couple of your uh, um, crew members are actually mm -hmm. from their crew. Oh, really? Uh, it flavored a little differently here and there, but pretty much uh, uh, Tristan and Dave uh -huh. are from are from oh, there. Dave. Dave. Um, <laughs> fucking Dave. Um, so <laughs> Dave ended up in an issue for them as well at one point. They were going through a storm. Uh, uh, they pissed off the storm lord, essentially. So they were oh. sailing through that. And some shit was going down. They were making rolls, saving throws. People were trying to stay on the ship. Everything was going crazy. And they're like, oh, yeah, everyone. You know, we fucking made it through. Uh, some of us got damaged, but everyone's fine. And uh, one of them was dip best friends with Dave. And I'm like, hey, make a perception check. So he does. He gets like an 18. And, and I'm like... You're breathing hard, you're exhausted, you look around, you, all your friends are there, everything's safe, finally, out from that storm. And then you realize, where's Dave? Where's Dave? And that's where we <laughs> ended that session. Because cause cliffhangers are fun. And we're like, mother! <laughs> uh, so they had oh, to David. go through a whole adventure... To try and find him again, and they did. I rolled to see if uh, Dave died or not. Uh, he did survive. They did find oh. him uh, absolutely exhausted. Um, I don't imagine so. So, uh, but but it was a good time. Um, and then, uh, um. Words. <laughs> oh, uh, so one of the characters, uh, his story came to an mm -hmm. end, and it was the best friend with Dave. So Dave left the ship to stay with him because they're best friends. So, yeah, they're uh, it was best uh, friends. Um. Well. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe it's possible. <laughs> and they were uh, roommates. They were roommates. <laughs> they. They. We're not roommates because Dave had his own room and Oscar slept uh, where where uh, Abukir likes to hang out. Um, yeah. But um, that that's that's his spot. That's that's his spot. So, the spot. The spot. Um, but. Yeah, it's, so that that campaign and stories there have helped me a lot um, to know what I want to do for you guys. Um, 
I will ask one important question. Actually, let's start with this. We we all saw your face. We all saw your face when I when Dave walked up to you and said, I have a question. What would it take for you to kill a friend? What went through your mind right there? I was like, because I, I mean, the crew that you gave me was very well put together. I feel like they all have their own personalities. And like the only one that's kind of still a mystery is Olive. But she doesn't seem like the touchy feely type. So it doesn't really shock me. Um, but I really, really liked Dave. I thought that he was hilarious, and the way the fact that we gave you the we made you give him such a ridiculously high voice. Yeah, Dave became a very quick favorite among the crew, and um, yeah, that that wasn't fun sitting there trying to think of a way not to kill him when it was looking very, very much like I was going to have to kill him, like he wasn't going to give me an option. Um, there was there was panic. Definite panic. <laughs> Definite panic. Um, yeah. Would would Quig have killed him if he would have proven himself a danger to the rest of the crew and the ship? She would have fought with it for a long time because Quig is ruthless in a lot of ways, but she is by no means heartless, and she cares very much for her crew. So. It would have um, weighed on her for a very long time and kind of pushed her down that optional storyline that I gave you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she would have taken a step towards the dark side. <laughs> yeah. Um, when I told you that there was a way to cure him, mm -hmm. what, what did you, where did your mind go? What did you think it was going to be? I didn't even know. Like, honestly, I had no clue. <laughs> but it was like, okay, there is a way to cure this. Like, this isn't permanent. And the fact that that's one of the reasons that I used the spell that I did and not command is because it lasted for 30 days. So I had time to figure it out. Because I also had command, which would have done yeah. a very sim similar thing, but it only would have lasted for one, like a for minute. One turn. One turn. Yeah. One turn. So I was like, well, and then I started reading. I was like, oh, no, this one will last for 30 days and we have time to figure this out. And Which, then at the end of that 30 days, if he couldn't have been cured, Quig would have put him out way, of his misery. One thing we should have looked at. <laughs> like I said, if they wanted professionals, they should have hired one. Um, the spell that you used, Gaius, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, its casting time is one minute. So it should have taken 10 rounds of combat to cast that spell. <laughs> maybe the, maybe, maybe, here, I'm going to give you a way out of this. Maybe the whole time that I was sitting there talking to him, which went on for more than a minute in True. real time. True, You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quig was just like, you know, behind her back kind of spell casting. See, you're going to be a good DM. You got ways out of shit. There you go. I have a ways out of shit. Out of shit. Um, <laughs> that's important as a DM. Find ways out of shit. Um, Find ways out of shit. When I was thinking of, of what to do to cure him, um, it actually reminded me of one game when I was playing Curse of Strahd at one point, one of the players had been bitten and um, that player couldn't make it to one of the sessions. So the other players, as a little side quest, they had to go find a rare flower that could cure vampirism, at least in someone that's not yet a vampire. It was a blue flower with red thorns. Blue flower, blue flower, blue, red flower, thorns, blue, red thorns, blue flower, red thorns, blue flower. So, uh, so <laughs> you sure wasn't colorblind. To... Um. <laughs> so I had to go find that. Um, and I just thought that was a funny little thing. And, and thinking of curing vampires and kick that in my mind. I'm like, no, nah, I gotta make it harder than that. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta make it a little bit different. Um, well, I'm still nervous about what she gave up, honestly. But what? Uh, I, I what know that's thoughts? gonna bite me in the ass. I know that's thoughts? gonna bite me in the ass. That was. 
I think because we kind of chatted about it, and the the nat one that I rolled mm-hmm. uh, applied to the dream as well. So mm-hmm. was I do have a question for you? Was that dream actually the dream, or yes. did she just okay? So 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 the dream happened almost exactly as I described. Mm-hmm. Almost exactly. Almost. Hmm. Uh. No, I honestly like that was the big thing is her asking if she was giving up Grim or anything to do with Grim. Uh, and being told no. You said you asked if Grim just died or is going to die. And I said no. No, I just I just asked if he if I was giving him up. <laughs> no, no, no. So that was Quig's big thing because that's a huge driving point for her is that whole part of her past. Um, but. Honestly, I have three ideas. I think that she either gave up the ability to have a child, uh, her whole reincarnation thing, I think she interrupted that chain and now won't reincarnate. Or the third option is something to do with the Storm Lord or something like that, okay. giving up her god. But uh, Two of those, those options did have. come to mind. They did. Um, and it's possible I chose one. It is possible. Lovely. Lovely. But uh, uh, when when you realize what was paid, I I can't wait to see your reaction to it. Is there a way? I will ask you this: Is there a way to undo it? Or is it just done? Yes. And I promise I will separate player knowledge from character knowledge. There, there is, and there is somebody that uh, I'll say that there's a, there's somebody that has a way to undo it. Okay. Cool. But <laughs> will that person do it? If it's Elserin, I'm gonna guess no. <laughs> uh, Elserin, Elserin, what what a great topic, Elserin. Oh, Elserin, I I am mad that nobody attacked him. Uh, I didn't, so- I didn't, I didn't tell anybody not to attack him. All I said is Lucas asked me if he could hit the wizard, and I told him I would not advise it. That's all mm-hmm. I said. And he was like, had, okay, had and he still actually been did. Up there and saw that. Luke would have been down. Which was not. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I did actually have somebody ask me what happened to Gibbs um, when Elsarin hit him. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when um, Andy went down there to see Elsarin and he was cleaning something off, he was cleaning the blood. Off a, essentially, they're like a set of brass knuckles. But once per day, he can use them and just knock somebody unconscious if they fail a saving throw. Um, and that's... So I flavored that as, like, that's something that he uses to bring in uh, um, dangerous criminals. Mm-hmm. So he, he Which just it goes fascinates up to him. me that he didn't hit Quig, but... Nope. He would never hit you. Well. With that. Hair's too tight. Um. <laughs> uh, uh, he, he was very fun to roleplay. You gave me one ha- hell of a character to put. If um, you want, I can, I can send you the information on all the other Celtas too. <laughs> I, when um, I say that I write, I enjoy writing backstory. When I say that, I mean that I have backstory for every single person, including Grim, that I'm currently working on. Yeah, I'm going to need that because some stuff's going on with that. Uh, I'll say this. I'll, I know where Grim is, and I know what's going on with him. Um, I also know where your father is, where your mother is, and where your little brother is. Oh, all Rick. <laughs> so, 
Cool. That actually uh, brings me to one thing. I'll, I'll give you a little player knowledge here. How did Elserin find you? Alric? Not on purpose. <laughs> Elserin uh, uh, found out about your guys' letters. Oh. Found the letters, found out where they were coming from, and backtracked from there. <sighs> Smart. <laughs> yep. He's a Kelta, so I shouldn't be shocked. <laughs> uh, I, I don't, you know, contrary to popular belief, I don't just, like, random DM magic here, they're just here because I say they're here because, boom. Um, no, I, I, I do that, but I also give them a reason of how. So, uh, um, uh, oh, that actually uh, leads me to another question. How did Quig feel meeting the dragon? Aloysius. Honestly, she being around something that was older than her is not something that she's familiar with. She doesn't often, I mean, like, when, when you're around other high elves, okay, yeah, you're going yeah, to yeah, yeah. be around people who are older than you, but, like, she hadn't been around somebody who was older than her in a very long time, and it was humbling. Humbling. I right before Quig. She, right before she got humbled again. I humbled Quig. That's what a wonderful feeling. I was trying. I was trying to think of a way for her to like ask if he wanted to like join their crew, <laughs> have an adventure on mortal <laughs> on uh, two human feet. You, I don't think he would have. Had had you rolled a natural twenty on persuasion, he would have thought about it. <laughs> Anything less than that? Nah. Nah. He's got he's, a wife and a kid. He's, he's free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that That's what he was doing out there. It was just a, such a wonderful day that he just... Went on a fly. You gotta yep. stretch them wings. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, you may see him again. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Depends on what happens. Um, I... Ooh. How did Quigs feel when seeing the death bark? She doesn't like coming across things on the sea that she doesn't know what they are. She's had a long time to sail around and see a lot of things. So the fact that she had never seen anything like it, it's a little terrifying. Uh, s speaking of terrifying, uh, a couple sessions ago, that fog, the ship in the fog. Mm -hmm. What did you think was on there? I was having a Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, the Black Pearl, the Curse of the Black Pearl moment where there's just, like, a crew of zombie pirates who just go and, like, pop up out of nowhere and just take out ships. That's so, what I thought was going to be over there. Ish. 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 Okay, so I was on the right track. Um, <laughs> sort of. So that was a ship, just a regular ship. Just a merchant mm -hmm. ship that had a lot of gold on it, by the way. I'll throw that out there. It had some stuff on there. Um, but, yeah, whatever. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say you made the wrong decision. You did not make the wrong decision. It, it would have been extremely dangerous to go on there. But uh, yeah, uh, there was the one person that you were left like... alive. Yeah, the moment that you were kind of like, oh yeah, then there appears to be one body that was torn in two and then tried to crawl away. I was like, yep, not setting foot on that shit. There was bodies everywhere. <laughs> that I'm one in sure. particular, though, was like, but what enough for Quig to be like. <laughs> what tore them apart? And what tried to drag your ship to them? What has the power to drag your ship to them? Cthulhu. In the, not quite. Well, maybe I should use him. Huh. And we don't have a and we don't have a bard, so we couldn't seduce yeah, Cthulhu our bard. way out of it. Oh Tristan's yeah, Tristan could seduce a, could seduce our way out. It, but here's here's the issue with that. Tristan doesn't give a fuck about sex. He 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 he's yeah. like the he anti bard. Like he's an asexual bard, which is another fun. Kind of like norm breaker. 
we'll see. That's that's one thing I liked about him uh, in the other campaign was just he he's just he gives a shit about food. Uh, like they went to a, a huge party, a huge party, and he mm-hmm. went with a date. And as soon as they were there, he left the date and went straight to the kitchen. Like he was like, yeah, "Thanks, bye," and just fucking fucked off. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I I love his character. Uh, there's some other characters in there that uh, I'll have fun with. Um, I'm definitely gonna start having a lot of fun with Stewarborn. For sure, Steerborn, uh We we made a little backstory with him. We need to work a little more on it. Um, mm-hmm. We mostly just got backstory of what's he doing there, what happened, and what's his goal. Mm-hmm. Um, all the building, all the building blocks have a good backstory. Uh, no, made in twenty blank. minutes. <laughs> when you have twenty nice. minutes to do it. Uh, oh. So, uh, um. I, I personally can't wait for the budding rivalry between him and Abu. The fact that Abu feels threatened because there's another big, tall, strong man on board with an extending yeah. hammer. Yeah. So the fact, like, when we were building, <laughs> when we were deciding, like, who to who to bring in, um, mm-hmm. and we built that character, I did not put that together. At all. I, I think it's going to make for a very interesting dynamic, honestly. I think it's... Because I didn't honestly... Like, I saw it going one of two ways. Like, I did see maybe Abu getting threatened by him, but I also saw Abu, like, becoming his best friend. And then becoming, like, the see, two inseparable, it, it inseparable like bubbies. Buddies. Bubbies. But... Oh, God. Bubbies. I don't know. I'm, I'm extremely hungover, so... <laughs> no, it's fine. That just... That Words name just, are hard. That name just hit me. May or may not be what my mother called me. Oh, I'm sorry. As a as a child, and she still she she calls my son that now. I call Aww. my son that. So. Uh, oh, speaking of Steerboard. Uh, yeah. He did forget. <laughs> It's all good. <laughs> that was rather late last night when we it was talked about it. We talked until like one one o'clock is when I got off. It was midnight my time, and then me and Morgan sat. Me and Morgan and Andrew sat there and talked for like an hour and a half longer. I told guys, Morgan about my pet crazy. thesis, and um, no, we were we were both we were just drunk. Hey, you're all <laughs> so about to different. get a chair stream. So I can go and uh, um, put Norse Forged on everyone uh, as soon as he figures out <laughs> how to jump on. He jumped on and jumped right back off because he's like that man. No, no, no. That man's that man's computer issues. <laughs> I will never not be messing with him about that. Um, oh, you got there it, bud. Did you get it? Ah, uh, maybe. Maybe. Possibly. Check to see if your camera is used in your OBS again. Yes, we see. Hey. You. You? There I be. Yep. There he be. Everybody gets a gets a uh, uh, a share stream from me for a moment while I fix camera settings. So we all fit. Oh no. Ah. Oh, yeah. We're doing it live. Fuck it. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Don't worry about it. What's up, Norse? How are you doing, buddy? I just made another response video uh, that a friend of mine uh, uh, did the voiceover for me. And uh, what it was, yeah, so that was some fun, is what that was because we were trying to figure out 
what's the best way to um, get the voice on there, right? And we tried, we tried, um, like, uh, just just doing it like on my headphone here, putting my phone up to it. We tried my, my speaker. We tried a whole bunch of ways. And finally, I was just like, screw it. Log into my TikTok. Just just do the voice over there and do the thing. So he was like, all right. And he had to figure out TikTok. Uh, uh, he's actually in here right now. Or, or was. Um, oh, no. We lost him. No, because I'm still in my face. Oh, no. We lost him again. Don't mind us, people. We're having. Uh, in my face. I don't worry about it. People have done worse on, on Twitch. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, right. the guy that actually did the voiceover is in chat right now. What's up, Genma? Thank you. Nice. I appreciate you. You're amazing. Um, can't wait to uh, see what you do on TikTok, sir. But yeah, uh, Norse Forge, now that you're here. Um, Is his name Canubis? Like, like Anubis and Cannabis put together? Can Anubis, yeah. Can Anubis. Well played, sir. Fantastic. Well played. Fantastic. <laughs> Um, I wanted to ask you, Norse Force, um, uh, some some questions on um, huh? <laughs> you're just being a dork, is what you're doing. <laughs> God dang it! Is he, is he here? Is he not here? Hmm. Uh, uh, Genma says it comes from Alod's an old PC game. Where you could play metal mummies. Hmm. Oh, shit. Uh, uh, Norse Wars, I wanted to ask you, um, how does it feel to finally be playing D&D again after... It, how long? You said you hadn't played since 3.5? Yeah, like... Um, 2011? Oh, jeez. Eleven years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so yeah, how's it feel to finally be playing again? <laughs> really good. It's, it's, uh, I, I forgot how much fun this shit is. Yeah, yeah. And it's just gonna get more fun the more you, you learn the character and all the spells. The cool thing will be in the Oh, we haven't announced it yet. The, the thing that we're doing at that time with those people, um, you'll be a lot it's more cryptic. used to your character for that game, for that thing. The, the, the thing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the DM in me. I'm cryptic. It's what I do. <laughs> uh, uh, um, Quig. What does uh, what does Quig think of Stureborn right now? Oh, she's still processing the whole thing with Elserin, so she was just like, "Oh, okay, a another mouth to feed. It's it's not a big deal. It's not it's not a big deal that he's over seven foot tall." Luckily, <laughs> the, there is a cleric spell that creates food and water. So I do have the create the uh, the create and destroy water. Yeah. So I do have that one. You should be fine. The, the issue with that, the create food spell, mm -hmm. makes food. It doesn't taste that good. That's what Tristan's for. <laughs> That's true. That's true. There, that is what Tristan is for. Tristan is an amazing cook. Yeah. And what no, did you I don't get, think... sir? Hmm? What, did, what did you run to go get? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> So, so a funny thing when we were deciding on who's going to be on the talk show tonight, we were we were rolling a d6, and the highest roll was going to be on here. Uh, um, so these two and Archeo Wolf rolled their d6s, and these two got sixes. So I'm like, okay, just to roll between you two now. Both got sixes again. I'm like, 
Okay, you're both supposed to be on the show, apparently. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, how does Stjorborn, uh or what does he think about the crew so far? They're a ragtag bunch of ruffians. <laughs> what, what, misfits. A bunch of misfits. A group of misfits. We have a uh, a uh, what's the word? You can't communicate. Um, elephant. We've got Stone Lady. We've got Pocket Goblins. Uh, th- this is a ragtag group. Yeah, it's definitely a weird group. The the Metal <laughs> Man. The the two elves. <laughs> faces. We're putting faces very... together. Yeah. Uh, just wait till you see Gears in action. Gears is an interesting dude. Um, He's fun. He can do stuff with his body. Innuendo. Anyway, uh, which, which, by the way, okay, we've had we've had funny innuendos in the game. We have. Yeah. But last night, we just couldn't get away from the hammer innuendo. <laughs> you yeah. were, you were destroying it like beautifully, wonderfully. Hey, with, welcome, with the hammer shit, uh, I I knew you were gonna be fun to bring on. I didn't know that was going to happen. And I'm so satisfied. So satisfied. Um, <laughs> um, we have to get together and kind of figure out, like, who Storborn is. Like, where did he come f- Like, where did he really come from? What's, the- what's his goal? Or should we just fuck it do it live, like usual? <laughs> yeah. That way I can't give you anything to use against me. Oh, so speaking of that, speaking of that, for those on Twitch who don't know, we're having a bit of a challenge going on. Norse believes that he can get me to 10K by tomorrow night at midnight. Yeah. And if he does, he gets a magical item. I'll check what I'm at right now. You're almost at four. I haven't even done my live yet. I, I forgot about the interview thing. Look, I was getting set up to do my live. Three thousand nine hundred twenty-six. Got a ways to go. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. For context, <laughs> I started this challenge at eighteen hundred. So. I could be in a little bit of trouble. You're all in trouble because I, I set up my both of my lives. And when I'm done with this, I'm going to go live. I've got all of you. All of you uh, are going to get bombarded. So oh, fun. Bring it on. We, we got Kate to over a thousand. You, you see that? We can go live now. Yeah. I can go live and talk about archaeology things. Uh, that That is one of the most... Uh, uh, Exciting thing that's happened out of this so far. Um, I don't know. My social anxiety is through the roof. What'd you say, Norse? I said, speaking of archaeology, I had a thought earlier. Like, you know how like they found like, the crystal skulls and people are all like batshit about them? What if I cast one out of Nordic gold and like buried it in my fucking yard? And like a thousand years from now, somebody digs it up and goes, what the fuck is this? That's probably exactly what would happen is they would say, what the fuck is this? And then... You could start a controversy a thousand years from now. <laughs> could be. See, that could be a lot of fun. It could be. And oh, yeah. And, and uh, I, I made a shit ton more. You made a shit ton more? <laughs> Here's just a few. Oh, my God. <laughs> Get ready for Dawnbreaker, huh? <laughs> Which, oh yeah, I'm really making uh, break. I am messaging my friend right now to see uh, uh, if he can do such a thing. He's, he is looking into it. Um, Blow up Bethesda, actually. Ooh, I, I got. Could. I could bully them into submission. I bet. I bet you we could. I bet you could. Um. <laughs> I got so many. I can so for the very first time, I can't keep up with my comments. 
uh, and there's so many really, really funny ones. You're like, give on this Twitch man his right weapon. Huh? You're live on Twitch right now, aren't you? Yeah. Well, shit, I'll just pull that shit up, homie. I'm gonna go look. Yeah, uh, uh, we got quite a few people in here watching. Um, uh, it, because of you, a lot of things are happening. And, and we talked about some things. I don't want to say anything to... I want to be cryptic again because it's fun. I'm a DM. It's what I do. Um, we talked a little bit last night about some mutuals that you and Archeo Wolf have. About some mutuals that you and uh, sorry, it, I'll show you. You're okay. fine. Uh, um, I I just been thinking about how fun some of those could be, and if games like that kind of got a lot of attention, we could definitely get Bethesda's attention. And have a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> my mom, my mother, by the way, wants me to. She hates Dungeons and Dragons. She hates it. Why? Uh, Why? For for reasons uh, in history. Um, but she she's very proud of me for everything that I'm doing right now. But she wants me to get more popular. So I can get Ian Summerholder to play a game. And if you don't know who that is, uh, Vampire Diaries, Damon. She wants Still she wants me to play with Damon. Uh, look him up, Kate. You'll see, and because that that is her her celebrity I my, crush. I have my Pardon niches me. of nerdism, and that is not one of them. Uh, she she wants me to play a game with him, which would be awesome. I just want I want to play a game with Ryan Reynolds, because how fucking chaotic would that be? Oh, Ryan blue Reynolds, eyed boy. Okay, I know yeah, who he is. Ryan Reynolds and Jack Black. How fun would those two be? Jack Black would be a freaking blast to if play D and D with. If if you okay, <laughs> Norse. I'm gonna ask both of you this, but Norse first. If you could have three people to play with. You're a player, and they're they three are players. Who would you, out of anybody? Who would you pick? I need to put some thought into that one. Yeah, yeah, that's a big question. It is because I I know my answer. Straight up, uh, uh, Jack Black, uh, Ryan Reynolds, and um, uh, fuck, his name just left me. Why? Jeff Goldblum. Ooh. I was literally just thinking Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. So the three of them. Just imagine. I, I would say Jeff Goldblum. Chris Pratt. I think that would be Ooh. fucking hilarious. Ooh. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then actually a buddy of mine on TikTok. Who would that be? Don Marshall 72. He's the official oh. like Lord of the Rings expert. Oh, yeah, I know him. He would be excellent. That ooh. We really get him to play. We should get him to play. I to message that fool. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. <laughs> um so you have no choice. Uh tell him uh, uh I if he wants I will make it uh it's Lord of the Rings theme. Um, Kate, who would you have? Honestly, I think as soon as you mentioned it, honestly, I think Chris Pratt would be in mine. Mm -hmm. That would be a ton of fun. Um, no, actually, mm, it would be David Tennant. Uh, uh, Henry Cavill. He would yeah. be fun to play with. The king yeah. of the nerds. And who would be number three? Patrick Stewart. Uh, yes. Uh, yep, that would be yes. it. Uh, uh, That'd be a fun game. Andrew just commented, John Favreau, Ryan Reynolds, and his brother. Cool. Yeah. That would be nifty. John Favreau would be really, really good, I bet. Um, I had the thought. Uh, 
when you said Henry Cavill. I remember watching an interview that Henry Cavill was in and Tom Holland was in. And Tom Holland mentioned, like, hey, what if we played a game together? They're talking about Warhammer, which is, mm-hmm. if you didn't know, Warhammer is kind of something that gave birth to D&D as it is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, um, and I'm just like, but what if I could get you two to play D&D? How do you subscribe? To? You! I don't know, click subscribe? Where the fuck's the button? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> That's don't a great know, question. Twitch. I actually don't... I don't know Twitch either. Uh, you have to go to, to my profile. Um, I don't know. Hey, chat, how do you subscribe? <laughs> People actually like streaming how, on how Twitch do... being like, how does Twitch work? <laughs> It says gift a sub. It means you have one already. Oh, you're already subbed, Norse. If it says gift a sub, yeah, you are just... subbed already. Oh shit! Sweet. Okay. So when so one thing that was going on last night was people were buying subs and gifting them out. So basically, you became a subscriber because someone else bought the subscription for you. And gifted it to you. So, and uh, thanks to wonderful friggin' people, uh, that was done 91 times. Damn. Sorry, I already had two. So 89 times, which is rookie numbers. You gotta, you gotta pump those up if you want me yeah, to cry. Yeah, you gotta pump that shit up. <laughs> yeah. So that was the, That's what they were trying to do when they were trying to get me to to cry on stream. They were just buying a whole bunch of subs to try and get me to cry. Um, it's very interesting war tactics. <laughs> <laughs> Old dude, you dork. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it was interesting, but you didn't get me to cry. However, if it makes all the viewers feel better, I cried a little, like a couple of tears after the stream, cause cause some bullshit. Because some bullshit. <laughs> like, y'all were, y'all were mean. Oh yeah, speaking mean. Of, speaking we of Henry Cavill. Speaking of Henry Cavill, Kate. Nice. Yeah. I, I can't wait for season three. I need yeah. to finish. I'm reading the books. I need to finish the second book. <laughs> Move on to number three. Hey. You know what, Norse? If you get me to 10k, an extra an extra gift will be me crying. There you go. <laughs> but if I don't reach 10k, you have to cry on stream. I don't. I can't cry. Oh, that's right. You got your tear ducts got fucked, didn't they? Yep. Just, just, just pour some water in your eyes and just, just wail. <laughs> There's lit- there is literally a product out there you can buy called artificial tears. <laughs> Just use them. Why do you know this case? To the eye the other day, and not a tear was shed. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I know how that kind of thing can be. Asshole at every funeral I ever go to in my life because I can't ride. I, I'm always that guy that just stands there and is like, nope, not gonna do it. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, I embrace it. I cry. Uh, I think it, what, one time it did get me, though, uh, was at my grandpa's. I was fine. Totally fine. And then when they did the 21 gun salute, my little cousin, like, kind of got scared and, was, and, like, got near me and grabbed my arm. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> That's that's what got me. Here come me. the tears. Here come uh, the tears. God, he's not so little anymore, though. That kid's taller than me now. <laughs> uh, that's weird. I'm not even a short guy. I'm an average sight, and this motherfucker just shoots up above me. Um, <sighs> good. Archeo Wolf doesn't have that problem. Mr. Fucking six feet tall. Um. Uh, 
two. Yeah, like six yeah. three, something like that. Uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, Can't remember. Arcane Wolf. Yeah. Uh-huh. He's six three. I think he's I think like so. 6'3", three, yeah. 6'3", 6'2". Oh, the Arkeo Wolf. <laughs> Shit! What? I'm having the issue that Captain Deadpool had. Everybody I play, every everybody I have on my show, they're just taller than me. Nat's taller than me. Nat's like 6'2". Or 6 foot. I'm a but humble 5'7". I'm good. 5'8". At least I'm taller than somebody. <laughs> I'm the shortest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, of course, we don't know how tall Andrew is. Andrew, how tall are you, bud? <laughs> um, I do. I I, I want to ask one nifty thing that that came out of this. Uh, the game last night, when you were told your entire ship was destroyed, Norse. How did? What did you think could have done that? Me. What was going through your mind? Huh? When you first said that my ship was destroyed, I figured I did it. He's six one. You did it, huh? I figured that was going to be the, the 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 story there that I accidentally did it or I, I intentionally did it. I mean, I'm neutral. I mean, I can you can go either way, you know. What um when you had that nightmare, and I told you there was there was a something on the other side of the door. So, one little thing. Uh, had you failed that wisdom saving throw that you did, you rolled like a 25, you succeeded. But had you failed, the door would have just opened. By the way. It would have just opened without you going near it. And whatever was on the other side would have come in. <laughs> Doc, sorry. Don Marshall just messaged. He said he's totally down. Yeah! We Does got that- the Lord of the Rings guy. <laughs> That's um, awesome. The, it's, fuck yeah. And Andrew's six one. So yeah. I'm fuck. the shortest. Alright, yep. Um <laughs> I'm not what, very often the shortest, so I what work with does, a lot of short people. I'm gonna ask this two different ways. What does Stuarborn think is on the other side of the door? And what do you think is on the other side of the door? I don't know. Good. I got introduced to my deity yesterday, after the game. Good point. Good point. So I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Good point. This, this is what back. happens when you have twenty minutes to build a backstory. Uh oh, hey, uh, we do have a question for you, Norse. Why were you so ready to accept that you were dead when the game started? Why was I so ready? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it, the way it's, it was set up, I mean, it was like I was dead. I couldn't see. I heard a voice, a magical voice in my fucking head, all of a sudden being lifted yeah, out. Yeah, with everything put, it, put together. Yeah, it's like, fuck, I'm dead. Cool. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> Shit, this is how it ended. Cool. There's voices in my head, and I can't see, and I'm being hoisted. Oh, yeah, I'm going to Valhalla. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Fair point. <laughs> now, follow-up question to that. Is he upset that he's not dead? No. Well, I don't know. No, yeah, definitely no, because I couldn't see what would, what happened to, to my ship. Therefore, I couldn't have fought it and died in battle. Yeah, good, good, good. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's, it's going to be interesting for sure. Cause I already have things going through my mind, uh, uh on how all that's going to work. And, uh, thanks for, uh, answering my question on that, uh, on what you thought did it. That might yeah, help I, mean, me a little. I mean, if, if I was, if I knew my deity at the time, I knew that I knew who the, the adversary was, who, who, who do we, we don't like, and I hear uh, uh, evil presence behind a door, I'm going to naturally assume that's that. Okay. I'll me, say this. Me personally, uh, if I feel something spooky behind the door in real life, I'm just going to put holes in my door. That's that's probably the correct... The, the correct... That's, pre-act, yeah, that is the correct right answer. Reaction. Jesus. Wow. <laughs> right okay. 
uh, on that note of terrible words, uh, um, <laughs> th thank you both for being on. Uh, it, it's it's about eight o'clock now, uh, my time. So I actually have another game to get to. Ooh, it's, have fun! That I get to be a player in, guys. <gasps> I'm a player. Do you want me to add Don Marshall to this group for beginners? Uh, yeah, do it. Okay. Well, I'm just going to send but it to you. He's going to play with us. Yeah. Uh, do a one, sh one shot with him. Sure. I get a fangirl twice. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll send his at to you, and then you put him where he needs to be. Okay. Cool. Sweet. Uh, that's, we, we got Don Marshall, guys. Uh, uh, thanks Sweet. everybody in the chat for hanging out with us. We, we had quite a few people in here. I appreciate you all. Uh, um, appreciate everyone that's that's put work into all of this. And I'll find a way to reward people and my players. I'll find a way to reward you guys eventually when I'm not poor as shit. So how about, how about you just not bring Quig's brother into this? <laughs> uh, but Elsrin can just that, fuck off. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for being part of the stream. Uh, um, and we'll see you again on Tuesday, everyone. Bye.